This is the Caravelle from Sailor's Home. Let me tell you why it deserves a home on your whiskey shelf. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd, and like I said, this is the Caravelle from Sailor's Home. So let me get it into the glass, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now, I have covered whiskeys from Sailor's Home before on the channel. I covered the Storm Chaser by Sailor's Home. And if you wanna check that video out, I'll put a link up there, and there'll be a link down below in the description. But what this company does is they don't really produce their own whiskey, but they do buy in whiskey from other places and then they source it, they finish it in different ways to kind of give a new flair, a new life to the whiskey. Now, one of the people behind the brand is Jack O'Shea and he is one of the legends, kind of main icon figures of the Irish whiskey industry today. Very nice guy, but very, very knowledgeable whiskey on what makes a good whiskey. And this right here is a good whiskey. Now it is a blended whiskey, so it is gonna be malt and grain whiskey. It was matured originally in bourbon casks, and then it was finished in Martinique rum agricole casks. Now, the island of Martinique, it's quite small, has I think 11 Martinique kind of rum agricole producers, and it has this really distinctive style of rum. It has this kind of earthy, but still kind of tropical and sweet note, and it gives some very nice tropical sweet notes to the Caravelle whiskey. They named the whiskey the Caravelle in honor of the Caravelles. They were a type of sailing ship that would explore the world and explore the Caribbean and the island of Martinique. So that's where this whiskey gets its name because it really does lean into that Martinique rum cask finish. Now, I did say it is a blended whiskey, so it is malt and grain. They haven't disclosed how much malt and how much grain, but from tasting it, I know there's a fair amount of grain whiskey in the blend, and it is though good grain whiskey. You know, sometimes grain whiskey can have a bad rap, but when grain whiskey is made well, it has this kind of buttery, creamy, sweet note that lets it kind of take on a lot of flavors from other places, and in this case, it's definitely taken on a lot of that kind of rum cask influence because grain whiskey can be a really good base upon which you can build lots more flavors. The bottle does say that it is a 10 year old whiskey, but I did a bit of digging, I did a bit of research, and I found out that the grain component of the whiskey is 11 years old, and the malt component of the blend is 14 years old, and they spent six months finishing off in that Martinique rum agricole cask. Now, this is batch one, so batch two might be slightly different ages, but it is a 10 year old age statement, so if you do get this whiskey, the youngest you're gonna get in the blend will be a 10 year old whiskey, but for the batch one, it's 11 and 14 years old that went into the whiskey. It also comes in at 46% ABV, which is kind of one of my favorite percentages for drinking whiskey. It's not too hot that it's kind of uncomfortable. It's not, doesn't have too much burn, but it's also not down the floor, so you do get a lot of flavor. So let's go in for the nose on the Sailor's Home Caravel. Okay, immediately up front, it's got that base of grain, that buttery creaminess of the grain whiskey, but you get pineapple, you get ginger, you get like a nice kind of light tropical note coming through here. It's almost like a mango, like that, that fresh you know, mango juice where you get that vibrant mango, not like a dried mango where it's almost like caramelized sugar, like still quite bright and light. Mm. And there's also obviously there's gonna be some nice vanilla notes coming through from those years they spent aging in the bourbon casts, but nice, creamy, accented up with those kind of tropical notes coming through. Mm. Just a very nice kind of welcome on the nose. The more you sit with it, the more you get like a kind of a butterscotch, caramel, really kind of deeper sweetness there. Again, still accented up with that pineapple, with that nice light tropical note coming through. But yeah, there's definitely got a nice couple of layers to it between that kind of vanilla, the butterscotch, the buttery note, and those nice kind of rum influence coming through. I'm not getting like a huge amount of malt. Now normally for me, malt comes through as this kind of caramelized biscuit note, but not really getting a huge amount of malt on the nose. So let's go in for the palate and see if that changes. Cheers. There's a really nice rum influence right up front. As you get in, you get this kind of earthiness, this kind of, 
I don't know how else to describe it, this nice earthiness that you get from some rums. It definitely comes through on the palate of the whiskey. It has a nice kind of, like I said, that earthiness, but then as soon as you swallow it, you get a bit of the maltiness, you get that kind of biscuit, that kind of malty, not funk, but that kind of malty note comes through. A little bit of ABV, but not too much. Like I said, it comes in at 46% ABV, so it'll be there, it'll have a nice bit of presence, but it's not gonna have a huge burn. As I'm sitting with it now, getting more of that kind of butterscotch, more of that kind of toffee, a creamy note coming through, and still with that bit of pineapple, a bit of ginger, a bit of nice kind of tropical note. So I'm gonna go in for a second sip and see if I find any other kind of spices or anything else coming through. Cheers. Second sip around, again, more of that spiciness from that ginger coming through with a little bit of oak spice towards the end, like that kind of oaky influence coming towards the end. Now, their official tasting notes say that I might get some blood orange, might get some licorice. I'm not getting any licorice, at least for me on my palate, I'm not getting any licorice, but I can see a little bit of citrus coming through. I'm not sure I describe it as a blood orange, maybe the kind of zest of an orange, the zest of maybe actually, yeah, kind of like the zest of a blood orange, not quite lemony, not quite regular orange, but definitely kind of in that area. So I'd say maybe a bit of blood orange coming through, but definitely leading up front with that charge is that like that candy ginger, the butterscotch, the creamy note, bit of malt as it goes through into the in towards the finish. So I'm going to get in for another sip, but this time we're going to focus on the finish. Cheers. On the finish, it's definitely like a slow fade of the notes from the palate. So nothing major, new or different or out of left field is coming in the finish of the whiskey that was not there in the palate, but it's nice. It's definitely got that butterscotch, that creamy note coming through, the bit of spice, the malt, the oak spice kind of coming to the fore as those kind of creamier notes do fade down. Very nice and pleasant, just nothing new and surprising coming through on the kind of finish of the whiskey, just a kind of continuation of what you had from that nose into the palate as it fades off into the finish. Ultimately, I think this is a nice whiskey. I wouldn't call it a good whiskey, I'd call it a nice whiskey. This is the kind of whiskey that you can show off to someone who maybe isn't the biggest whiskey fan. Like, it's something that you know they're gonna like. That's so, It's very easy to like this whiskey. That's what I mean by it's not like, a good whiskey, it's a nice whiskey, you can enjoy it. It's got this creaminess, it's got that little bit of earthiness, it's got a bit of oak spice, it's got a little bit of heat from ABV, not too much though, and it has this kind of tropical, pineapple-y, gingery spice note that definitely comes through throughout the kind of nose and the palate of the whiskey. So it's definitely one that's easy to enjoy and very kind of just a nice whiskey to drink. In fact, when I was thinking of what cocktail to make with this whiskey, I just came back to the idea that it's a nice whiskey, that's enjoyable to drink, and it's got a bit of tropical notes. So for me, my favorite whiskey cocktail is a whiskey sour, but because it's got those kind of tropical notes coming through, I'm gonna be making a pineapple and ginger whiskey sour this week. So if you wanna see that cocktail, make sure you scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button because I put out cocktail recipes on Fridays. I put out whiskey reviews on Wednesdays. So if you want to see more, you got to hit subscribe. And while you're down there, let me know in the comments below what whiskey you'd like to see me review next because I've got a lot of whiskeys. There's a lot of whiskeys in the world and I always like getting feedback on what I should review next. So until next time, sláinte.